Well, good morning, good evening, whenever, wherever you're watching this. Uh, my name is Scott Matthews. I'm glad you all are with us today. Uh, I'm the Elkhart Campus Pastor. And as you know, we had to cancel this week's in-person service for COVID precautions. Uh, guys, our number one responsibility is to provide a safe environment for you and your family. Uh, and if that means we have to cancel one of our services to do it, then so be it. Uh, we didn't do that uh, just on a whim. Uh, we had a lot of good conversations. We talked it over, but we thought this was the best uh, route for this Sunday uh, to make sure everyone's safe. Uh, most of our staff has tested negative, which is great, and, and everything looks good. We wiped down the church as best we can, and, and we're just excited to get things going, uh, back rolling. Uh, when we found out about the COVID case, uh, it was too close to Sunday to just keep going. So uh, we're excited. Uh, we're, we're hopeful that next week we'll be back rolling. Uh, but continue to keep Drew and his family in your prayers. Uh, he's resting up at home with his family, uh, re recovering from all the symptoms. Uh, but we just want to encourage him and encourage them and just wrap our arms around them and let them know we're behind them and we're all in this together. We're just going to, we're going to move forward together as a church. Sometimes things get rocky and you got to go up and down and around and around, but it's kind of like a boxing match. You know, you, you get hit, you got to bob and weave, you got to move a little bit. But you got to stay in the fight. So River Oaks, let's stay in this fight together. Kind of reminds me of what Paul said to the Thessalonian church. He said, guys, in every circumstance, in every circumstance, always be joyful. Be joyful. Always pray and thank God in everything. You want to talk about being flexible. Here's Paul. He, he was a guy who uh, was stoned and left for dead. He was shipwrecked. He was bitten by poisonous snakes. He uh, was thrown in jail. He was diverted by, uh, deserted by some of his closest comrades. And through all of that, he says, we can still be joyful and be thankful. He said, I've learned to be content in every situation. He said, I've had a whole lot when the money was good and, uh, and everything was taken care of and running smoothly. And to when I had nothing and didn't know what I was going to eat the next day. Through all of that, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. See, guys, those scriptures represent being thankful and joyful in spite of the circumstances and craziness going on. Those scriptures represent having peace in spite of all the craziness. And, and the peace that we're looking for, the peace that we need only comes from Jesus. Jesus said, the peace that I have, the world can't give. And guys, we're going to have to live in that peace, especially in days like today. And yeah, last week we, we launched our groups, we launched our men's and women's Bible studies, launched our students, launched uh, uh, other different things. And, you know, earlier in the year, you guys had to, you know, you had to close uh, some of your events and you had to reschedule weddings and you had to stop trips. And school, oh man, let's talk about school, closed and open and closed again. Sometimes it just feels like you're taking one step forward and two steps back. But in every situation, in all things, we can give thanks and be joyful because we know our hope is in a God who holds our tomorrow. Our hope is in Jesus because we know he holds every single minute of tomorrow. And that's why we can be joyful. Guys, even if you have to find something to be joyful for, we can be hopeful and joyful in Jesus. Because, guys, the tougher the setback, the greater the glory. The, the harder the fight, the sweeter the victory. So, guys, when we come back, when we come back hopefully next week, let's just come back guns a-blazing. Let's, let, let's come out swinging for the fences. If you planned on serving and you signed up to serve or volunteer or to join a ministry, let's come back full force. Let's make it happen. Why? Because we're going to make fully devoted followers of Jesus here. That's what we're planning to do. We, we want to make fully devoted followers of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you why, whether virtually or in person. Because, guys, we need God's people to rise up today and be who he called us to be. That world out there needs fully devoted followers of Jesus to be who God called us to be. We're living in a broken world that needs Jesus. And we need to live out God's truth with conviction. Not just sit on the sidelines and complain about what's, happened, what's happening, but, but live out God's, God's truth with conviction. But to do that, 
We have to be fully devoted followers of Jesus who are growing in our faith and who are okay with being uncomfortable. And that takes maturity, and that maturity takes growth. And I told this to our Elkhart campus last week that growth really doesn't happen in comfort. Growth doesn't happen when everything's going good and, and, and everything's going smooth and, and, and all the bills are paid and everything's, everything's straight and easy. Growth happens in trouble. It happens when there's, when there's pressure. Growth happens when you have to make a decision to put into practice the things you say you believe. And last week, we talked about growth through connectedness. All of our campuses talked about being connected, and we launched our groups. But as followers of Jesus, fully devoted followers of Jesus, you need to continue to have personal growth. The the goal, you guys, is not to remain a baby Christian. (laughs) It's not to remain a baby follower of Jesus. You should be developing and growing so that you can be equipped to live effectively and to take on that world that God has called us to go into. Because guys, check this out. If, if you've been saved for decades, if you've been coming to River Oaks for decades and you're still in diapers, if you're still pooping on yourself, if you're still in a stroller spiritually, you're not going to be effective at living as a devoted follower of Jesus. So the question is, are you growing as a follower of Jesus? So I want to start off with this. Crisis. Crisis will expose your level of growth as a fully devoted follower of Jesus. Crisis. Not comfort. Crisis. Crisis is like the test. It's like the exam that you have to take. It's going to test to see if you've been learning. Crisis comes to test our growth. How you handle trouble and setbacks. How you handle issues. How long you hold on to grudges. How you, how you handle yourself when people do you wrong, the things that you post on social media, all those things show us how you're growing. All those crisis situations expose our level of growth as a follower of Jesus. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, it's really interesting. The writer of Hebrews, he starts talking about all this deep stuff about Jesus. He starts comparing Jesus to this Old Testament figure called Melchizedek. And then he starts talking about how Jesus is our perfect high priest and how he sacrificed himself for us. But the writer does something interesting. He just stops in his tracks and he says, you know what, I'm going to stop right there because he says, I feel like you guys aren't developed enough. You're not mature enough to take on what I'm saying to you. So let me show you. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 says this. There's so much more we would like to say about this, but it's so difficult to explain, especially since you're spiritually dull and, seem, and don't seem to listen. It's like he's wagging his finger. You've been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You're like babies who need milk and can't eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what's right. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. Guys, your goal is to be mature as a follower of Jesus, to be spiritually fit, to to grow from out of diapers (laughs) into underwear as a believer in Jesus. Our goal is to grow deep. Our goal is to grow far into God. No more flabby Christians, right? No more baby Christians, no more of that. And you want to know why it's important to grow in your faith? Because there's division out there. There's brokenness out there. There, There's there's confusion. There's, there's, There's division. There's racism. There's hate. There's political divides. And guys, guess what? The world cannot heal itself. The world will not be healed because of a presidential election. The world's problems will not be solved by who becomes president. Doesn't matter who it is. The world's problems won't be solved just because laws are changed. The world's problems won't be solved even if we find a vaccine. Guys, what's going to solve the world's problems is heart transformation. When hearts and lives and minds are transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will see transformation like you've never seen it. 
When hearts and minds are transformed, we can see transformation. But we need believers who are built to take on that world. Believers who are mature and growing in their faith to take on that world that God called us and commissioned us to go into. We need fully devoted followers of Jesus to be the light of the world, to be the salt of the earth like Jesus commissioned us to do, to go after our one, to bring the gospel, the good news of Jesus to people who need to hear it. But it's going to be kind of hard to do that if you're still in a stroller, (laughs) if you're still in diapers, if you haven't eaten solid food yet. It's going to be hard to do that if you're not a mature Christian who can't quite take the weight off the rack yet. So how do you do it? How do you, how do you grow as a follower of Jesus? What's the process? What, what do we do? How do we grow so that we're no longer needing mommy to cut up our chicken nuggets and serve them to us and need a nap in the afternoon? Well, I know some of us probably still do need a nap in the afternoon. So number one, you got to get into the gym. Yeah. Yeah. You got to get into the gym. As devoted followers of Jesus, we have got to open up a membership at the Jesus Fitness Club. That's right. Because strength and growth take discipline. It takes discipline to grow as a follower of Jesus. Guys, your faith is like a living organism. Just like your body, your faith needs to be fed. It needs to be developed to take on the commission that Jesus has called us to do. Guys, in our sinful nature... Our sinful nature is like the fat on our bodies. We got to burn that fat off. You don't work out your fat. You burn it off. And just like the fat we have to burn off, we have to kill and mortify that sinful nature. We got to burn it off. Let me show you. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24, puts it like this. It says, those who belong to Christ have nailed their fat. (laughs) They've nailed their childishness, their babiness. They've nailed the passions and the desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. And guys, that takes discipline. It takes discipline to mature and grow and strengthen. See, when you first start working out, and you peel yourself out of bed and you, and you go to the gym and you finally start working out and your body's sore and your legs are so sore that when you go sit down on the toilet, you can't even get up anymore because your legs are so sore. Or one of your friends asks you to go out and run three miles and you're pretty much dead. You're like, man, forget this. This is for the birds. This is for crazy people. Who would want to inflict pain on their body like that, right? You're probably pretty much done. But when you see the goal of what you're trying to accomplish... When you see that healthier lifestyle, to be able to fit into those jeans or those clothes again, it can motivate you to continue to go forward. As a follower of Jesus, when we know what we're growing towards, when we know we can grow as a a fully devoted follower who's going to be able to take on that world for Jesus, who's going to be able to go to the lost like he commissioned us to, we can stay motivated. And the driving force behind our motivation, you guys, is the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit, he, he's a lot like our personal trainer. <laughs> he's that personal trainer, your internal personal trainer who's prompting you and guiding you and reminding you to be more and more like Jesus every single day. Guys, Jesus said the Holy Spirit would lead us into all truth. He would guide us and be our comforter. The Holy Spirit would, would work with us, but we have to work alongside the Holy Spirit in our development process. We have to work alongside the Holy, just like you have to work alongside a personal trainer. See, your personal trainer can, can make the workout and he can make the, 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 the meal plan. But you're the one who's got to carry it out. The Holy Spirit will remind you, he'll prompt you, but you're the one who has to make the decision. So we have to work alongside the Holy Spirit in our growth process. And one of the workout disciplines that we need to grow in our faith is reading and meditating on Scripture. Reading, not just reading, but meditating on Scripture as well. Soaking in Scripture. Meditating on it. Just diving into it. And and meditating means reflecting and fixing your mind on something. And guys, so often, the reason why we experience so much anxiety is because we're meditating on the wrong things. We're meditating on on social media conversations. We're meditating on news articles and, and everybody else's opinion. Sometimes we're even meditating on things that, that 
give us unrealistic expectations for ourselves and for others. And your mind is not built to take all that stuff in your mind and still be healthy. But when you meditate on truth, when you meditate on the life-giving word of God, it nourishes you. It, it refreshes you. It, it guards your heart and it matures you. Let me show you something. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, puts it like this. Paul is writing this from jail. He says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts. Meditate. Focus. Reflect on. He says, fix it. Fix your thoughts on whatever's true. Whatever is honorable, whatever is right and pure and lovely and honorable, think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice. He says, keep going. Keep working it out. Keep going to the gym. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace, (laughs) your personal trainer who's going to help you grow, he'll be with you. Guys, Paul is writing that from jail. (laughs) Talk about being flexible, right? It's kind of like Paul is on a Zoom call with with, with the church. He's writing from jail, just like this. He's on a Zoom call telling folks, look, guys, remember to to keep the things in mind that I talked to you about. Focus your mind on the word of God, he's saying. And King David kind of says the same thing. He says, God, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. So often in the book of Psalms, David talks about how he meditated on the word of God. He said in the book of Psalms, he said, Lord, I study your commands and I'll reflect on them. God, I'll hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And we know sometimes we don't like reading the Bible, right? There's times I don't like reading the Bible myself, right? You just just want to do other things. Or you're like, Scott, I know I need to read my Bible. I know I need to get into the gym, but it's, you know, it's hard for me to do it. I don't have a lot of time. That's all right. There's an app for that. <laughs> the U version. The U version app is an amazing app you can download and you can listen to the Bible while you're cutting grass, you know, while you're cleaning up your kitchen. They have small little devotionals that you can read real quick. It's an awesome app. Maybe you should just listen to podcasts or listen to sermons or even listen to the music that, 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 that teaches scripture through music. Oftentimes, our church sends out playlists that, that, that our worship team plays, and you can listen to those. So many different ways you can, you can soak in the Word of God. But for so many of us, reading God's Word and reading our Bibles is a habit that we have to develop. It's not, it doesn't just come. There's a saying that people like to say, you got to act your way into feeling. You might not feel like doing it, but you just got to do it. Just jump into it. Just like working out, you might have a plan, but you can't keep making excuses for it. Just jump into it and make it happen. And the more you do it, the more repetition you have, the more you'll see yourself motivated, right? And the more you dive into the Word of God, guys, I'm telling you, the more you dive into it, the words will just start jumping off the page. The Holy Spirit will just start uh, guiding you and directing you, and it'll start feeding you. And God's Word will help mature you and do all those different things for you. And maybe you don't know where to start. Maybe like, Scott, I just don't know where to start. Start in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Start in one of the Gospels. Start in the book of Proverbs or Psalms. But just dive into it and jump into it. And you'll see how your motivation will start to increase. It's just amazing when we just dive into the Word of God. Now, for everybody who is an attender at any of our campuses, we have another tool for you to help you read the Word of God. It's called Right Now Media. If you go to riveroaks.org and click on our resources tab, you can have access to literally the Netflix of Bible study. (laughs) Right now, media has all kinds of studies for the youth, for women, for men, for leadership, all types of devotionals, literally hundreds of ways to study the Word of God. It has access. You have access to that. All different types of ways you can do that. If you're at our Goshen campus, our men's and women's Bible studies have just kicked off. Join one of those groups. You can still go online and join one of our groups there. Now, our our Elkhart campus, we don't have men's and women's Bible studies yet, but you can join a missional community and hop into one of those devotionals. But guys, reading the Word of God, meditating on God's Word is a habit you have to have to grow as a follower of Jesus. We have to study the Word of God. 
and read it and digest it. Because whatever you put in is going to come out. So if you're not putting in the word of God, whatever's down there is going to come out. So put the word of God down in you. Now, it's, it's good to listen to Christian books. It's good to listen to sermons. That's fine. But none of that should replace your reading of God's word. You've got to learn to read God's word for yourself and fall in love with it. So just dive in. Now, one of the other ways to grow in our faith and develop from a baby (laughs) into a mature Christian is prayer. Being devoted to prayer as a fully devoted follower of Jesus is so essential to your growth. We have to be devoted to prayer. See, guys, as I read through the Bible more and more, I see how people really didn't do anything great for God until they got on their knees and they seeked him. Until they started praying and seeking God's will. God was looking for people who would seek him and find him and call out to him. When I read through the Gospels and I see Jesus' life, he spent so much time in prayer. Jesus would spend hours in prayer. He would go up to a mountain and pray early in the morning. He would would go late at night and go pray. He would leave his disciples, clear clear his schedule just to go pray and talk to the Father. So if Jesus Christ is spending so much time in prayer, surely his followers should do the same. Guys, prayer is such a vital part of our growth as followers of Jesus. We've got to develop that. So see, when we read and when we meditate on the word of God and we study how he calls us to live righteously, to love, to forgive, to work for peace, when we treat the word of God like medicine, when we're hurting, and, and we use it for encouragement. And when we pray for God's will to be done here on earth, when we do all those things, man, you'll start to see development. You'll start to see how God turns you and matures you from a baby saint to a strong, mature Christian. You'll see how growth happens in your, in your walk with God. Guys, I'll tell you this. God will put you in situations to test what you say you believe. God will put you in situations where you will have to put into practice the things you say you believe. You'll be put in situations where you're going to have to forgive. You'll be put in situations where you'll have to be a peacemaker because there's tension. God will put you in situations where you're going to either have to trust him because there's no other option. And guys, that's our weight room. That's where we develop. That's where we get stronger. But guess what? God said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. Just like a good personal trainer spotting you, he said, I'll be there with you when you take the weight off the bar. I won't let it fall on you, he says. That's why we can trust him. We won't be alone. The Holy Spirit will be there throughout all those situations, reminding you of what you were reading and meditating on. You know, oftentimes people say, Scott, you know, I try to memorize scripture. That's fine. You know, that's fine to try to memorize scripture. But I found that if you just spend quality time in scripture, just repetitively being in Scripture, you'll be amazed how the Holy Spirit brings to remembrance the things you were reading. I remember when I was a kid, (laughs) I used to wonder, man, I used to look up to old, you know, the old Christians and be like, man, were you guys born believers? Like, (laughs) were you guys born Christians? Like, how are you so strong in your faith? I used to wonder that as a kid. But I came to realize how persevering through suffering is another way we grow as fully devoted followers of Jesus. Persevering through suffering. I came to realize, little did I realize how all those people, what they went through to grow in their faith. I didn't realize how much pain and how much trouble they went through to grow in God. I didn't realize how much time they spent crying out to God in prayer. Let me show you something. James chapter 1, verse 2 says this. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, when you go through the the trials and the issues and the suffering, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. It's amazing. See, guys, when we put all this together... When we meditate on the word of God and soak in it, when, when, we, when we seek him in prayer, and when we trust him in our suffering, we will develop into fully devoted followers of Jesus. 
When we allow God to mold us and shape us and we go through the ringer and, and we allow him to, to, to take us in the weight room and we do all these things, we will see growth as followers of Jesus. The amazing thing is God doesn't leave us there. He's got more for us. He also gives us tools and he gives us gifts and he equips us with the ability to, to grow as, as followers of Jesus. He gives us all these gifts and abilities to, to build up the church and to impact the world for his sake. Let me show you something. Last scripture, Romans chapter 12, verse 6 says this. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if you have been given the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving, serve, serve them well, serve others well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is encouragement, encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Guys, these are just some of the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us and equips us with. He gives us these gifts to build up the church and carry out God's work. And check this out, guys. Listen to this. This is God's work. His work is to bring mankind back into relationship with him. Jesus came here to carry out the work of the Father, to bring mankind back to him. And as the church, that is our responsibility. Our responsibility is to carry out the work of bringing mankind back to God. Guys, our, our work is to go into that world that is filled with division, that's filled with hate and confusion. Our, our work is to go into that world and proclaim the glory of God. L let me tell you something. You want to know why Jesus was able to sit with thieves and robbers? You want to know why he was able to sit with people who were, who were possessed by demons and who had diseases? The reason why Jesus could sit with all these people is because he was the cure he was the cure for the pain of the world. He, he had the answers. He was the light of the world. He was the cure for all of the problems so he could sit there with him. So if that same Jesus is living inside of you, what are you afraid of? That same Jesus who is the cure for the world's pain is living inside of you. He said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Greater is his spirit. So what are you afraid of? Guys, the church is God's catalyst. We, we are the conduit through which God accomplishes his plans here on the earth. So he equips us with the gifts and the abilities we're going to need to advance his kingdom here on, here on planet earth. And that's called going after the lost. It's called going after our one. That's why you've been given the gift of leadership and teaching and serving. Maybe you have the gift of prophecy. Maybe you have the gift of administration or faith. Maybe you just have an amazingly creative mind. But guys, you've been given these gifts to build up the church and influence the world for the sake of the gospel. Guys, you're doing more than just using your gift to lead a Bible study. You're changing the world. You're doing more than just teaching kids or teaching students. You're changing the world. You're doing more than just leading worship or leading a small group or missional community. You're using your gifts and abilities to change the world. And even on Monday through Friday, even on Monday through Saturday, when you're not in the church, you're still using your gifts to change the world. Guys, you're not on your job to get a paycheck. You're on your job for an assignment. You're there to invade. <laughs> you're there to go in to show the world what Jesus looks like. So use your gifts. If you've got a job and you've got the gift to, to lead or to administrate or to serve, he's giving you those gifts to give him glory where you're at. We gotta, re, we gotta reorient our thinking about what God is doing in our life. You're not just a business owner to own a business. You're there to bring glory to God. So use those gifts to bring God's glory to shine His light. That's why He gave us these gifts. Guys, Jesus was traveling from town to town, teaching about the kingdom. And He was, and as He was teaching, he was healing every sickness and every disease. And thousands of people were following Jesus. Thousands of them were coming from all over to follow him. Just him and his 12 disciples, all kinds of people were following him. And the Bible says he looked out 
He said, man, the harvest is ripe. God's people are ready to hear the truth about God. But he says, man, I need laborers. I need fully devoted followers who are growing in their faith, who are using their gifts and abilities to go after my harvest. Jesus says, I need fully devoted followers who can go out there and use their abilities, grow in their faith to bring in my harvest, to do my work, to bring mankind back to him. So guys, that's the reason why we grow in our faith. Not to remain, belie- not to remain baby believers, but because we're on an assignment. We're on a mission to go. But as we go, we got to be growing. We got to grow before we can go the way God wants us to. We got to grow in our faith. So as fully devoted followers of Jesus, we've been commissioned to be the light of the world, to go after our one. Guys, we have been commissioned to bring the good news that Jesus is the cure. Guys, our world is hurting. Our world is in pain. There's brokenness, there's hatred, there's racism, there's political divides. And our job is to proclaim that Jesus Christ is the cure. And he's given you everything you need. He's equipped you to go out there and go after it. But we got to grow in our faith. As fully devoted followers of Jesus, when we grow and we mature, when we meditate on the word of God, when we, when we call out to him in prayer, and when we endure suffering, man, it molds us into who God wants us to be. It turns us, it turns all that fat into muscle so we can go out there and be who God called us to be. So how are you growing? How are you growing as a follower of Jesus? Because I'll tell you this, you can't grow just being a Sunday morning Christian. You got to grow Monday through Saturday as well. What are you doing to grow as a follower of Jesus? We got to go through that training. When we put all this together, when we get in that weight room, God will continue to equip you with everything you need to bring glory to his name. Greater is the spirit that's living inside of you than the spirit that's in the world. Let's grow so we can go. Now let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. God, I thank you because you're amazing. God, help us to continue to grow. Help us to continue to shine our light in this world, God. Help us to continue to seek you so that we can go out in this world, God, and let people know the glory of God. God, our world is hurting. There's so much division. There's so much hatred. There's so much confusion. But Jesus, you are the cure. And help us to grow as as your followers so we can go out and complete the assignment you've given us. Help us to grow, God, so that we can go. Build us up, Father. And Lord, you know what's going on. God, you know the people who are behind the screen, who are watching, watching on their computers, watching in their living rooms. God, you know what's going on in their homes. Holy Spirit, you be there with them. Equip them with what they're going to need to go after the lost, to carry out your assignment. And God, we thank you and we love you. In your name we pray. Amen.
Well, guys, we thank you for watching us here online. We know God is marvelous and how excellent, isn't he? He's amazing God. Well, guys, hopefully next week we can come back and we're looking to come back full force. If you're looking to continue to, to join one of our groups, check out online, join a men's or women's Bible study or a mom's group or any other group we have, one of our missional communities. You still got time to do that. And we're looking forward to next week. We're going to continue to monitor this week, but guys, we're looking forward to coming back full swing. We'll let you know. Be on the lookout for any communication, uh, but we're excited. We're here to make fully devoted followers of Jesus, and we're going to do that as best we can. So we'll see you next week.